more? Yeah, that's a great example. If the question is, if there's a suffering dog in front of me, can I trust that taking care of that dog is gonna help the situation? I mean, that so doesn't fit into um, uh, quantitative thinking about the planetary crisis. Helping that suffering dog, I mean, you guys have adopted this little puppy, you know, that had a broken hip and stuff. <laughs> How is that gonna help? That dog is, would have otherwise died and instead it's gonna grow up and it's gonna consume resources. You are hurting the planet by saving that cute little puppy, aren't you? Something about that language is wrong. Like that violates a, a, a very clear knowing of the heart. But the mind, I mean, how can you reconcile that clear not knowing of the heart with the mind's calculations? So for, to answer that question, I have to unearth where the mind's calculations are coming from and the theory of change and the theory of causality underlying the mind's calculations that, that see the world as a big collection of uh, mathematical forces operating on masses, which means that your impact on the world depends on the um, calculable, even if you, we can't practically calculate it, but it depends on, on how much force you're exerting and how you're exerting that force on the world. And how can you argue with the math? The dog's gonna eat more. But of course, you can look, reach for another logic that you might say the hardening of your heart that is required to not take care of that puppy translates into a lack of care in other realms, translates into a lack of care for the environment, translates into a lack of care for other people that generates a society of distrust that prevents us from cohering around a mission of service to the earth. So there's another thread of causality that might help your mind make sense of this heart's knowledge. And it really, for me, points to what I've come to understand is that we don't understand, that we really do not know how this planet operates and how the cosmos operates, that, and that there are mysterious threads of causality that we cannot possibly follow with our minds in advance. You can't possibly know what the effect is gonna be in five years, 10 years, 20 years, 500 years of adopting that little puppy. Because we don't know, because we cannot calculate it, because we cannot calculate the effect of bears scratching on trees or whales uh, migrating in certain patterns to distribute nutrients in the oceans, because we cannot calculate those things, we cannot rely on the machinery, the mental and systemic machinery of calculation to make decisions about what's important and what to choose and what to do in the world. Therefore, we have to rely on something else. And what I rely on and what I would encourage people to rely on is the call to action that is issued through the heart that makes you care about something, that makes you love something and want to exercise your care toward that thing, to trust that. Now, why would you want to trust that? Why would it make sense to trust that? Why, why isn't that just like some passing fan fancy or some kind of emotional, you know, um, um, emotional fugue or whatever, like some, you know, like how could that be part of a coherent uh, evolution um, of life on earth uh, or a movement toward healing? How would you, how do you know? This you're going to have to actually take as, um, I almost want to say, an article of faith. <clears throat> it only makes sense if you believe that there is some kind of rhyme and reason to all of this. That what, where we are placed in life, what is presented to us for our care, is not entirely random. But that there is an order to things. There is an intelligence to things. In other words, that there is an intelligence to the world, some kind of orchestration to the events of our lives, to the situation that we were born into, uh, to the things that are presented to us to make choices about. 
when you believe that, and this is, it's not the same as saying Earth is alive, but it is aligned with that way of thinking that says that selfhood, consciousness, is not only a property of human beings, but that it inheres in other beings, that it inheres in the entire planet, that it inheres in the cosmos itself. So it's aligned with that way of thinking. And you adopt that way of thinking and then you think, okay, so maybe all of us are part of this movement towards healing and this evolution of life toward more and more life, the evolution of, of matter toward more and more complexity. And how do I know to serve this thing? How does this coordinating intelligence, this will to wholeness, this will toward expansion and complexification, how does it communicate to us? How do we know when we cannot possibly calculate or predict or know in our minds how it's going to work? How do we know what to do? Well, I think that the this coordinating intelligence, for lack of a better word, communicates to us through the organ of the heart, which is a, a listening organ. And the more we allow ourselves to care and to love, the more accurate this communication is so that we know, oh, this is mine to do right now. This is the puppy that, that it's not, now I'm not saying go out and find lost puppies and take care of them. But if one of them crosses your path, and, and you feel that. It's not that you should feel something, it's that you do feel it. Somehow this one got under your skin. This, this child, I met a man who's gonna adopt a child and, and instead of him going to the foster care system and he's a real problematic child and the guy is like 70 years old and it would be crazy for him to do this, but this is the thing that got under his skin. Something gets under your skin. Something makes you care and you can't say that this is the most important thing in the world and it's gonna maximize the impact and leverage of my my choices. And this is the, the high impact leverage point for action. And everybody should do this because this is gonna save the world and reduce carbon more than any other thing. And so we should do this and not that. You can't justify it in that way, but it's the thing that gets under your skin that's been presented to you and calls to your love and calls to your care. And I'm saying it's okay to listen to that. It's okay to trust that, to be led by that and to watch the magic unfold when you step into trusting that there is an intelligence to all of this, that I am part of an inconceivable consciousness beyond myself. Listening to our love and our care aligns us with the reality of a living, intelligent, conscious world or even universe. And then we begin to notice how true it is. That becomes our lived experience that sustains us in continuing to choose and to live in this way. Mm -hmm.